So um, I just want to uh, welcome everyone that is arriving. I'm going to go ahead and spotlight myself so you can see me. Uh, my name is Corey. I am the host of this show. We're going to do a test right now. On the count of three, I want the whole audience to laugh. And we're going to see what happens. And it's going to be a great, one of your great all-time fake laughs. But this is a way that we're going to be able to see if somebody's settings are wrong. Okay? Everybody ready? On the count of three, we're going to do our best fake laugh. Here we go. One. And by the way, some of you are muted, so we are not going to hear your fake laugh if you're muted. So it's not really going to matter, but you can still fake laugh. It's good for your soul, for your neshama. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Pretty good. So, so what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to do a com a comedy show for a, with a bunch of uh, performers who have some of them, may, many, most of them, never done stand up. Not all, but most of them never done stand up before. So I want you to right now go crazy for these stand ups that are going to be coming out on stage tonight. Let me hear it for them. <laughs> yes, that was a nice, good round of applause. And uh, by the way, uh, cheer if there's somebody here that you know that you are here to support. <laughs> How about give it up if there's, if there's nobody you know, you are just here to see what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Right, that's my mom. Thank you. Thank you. That. She pretends she doesn't even know me. Um, so uh, so let's get started. I'm I'm Corey. Uh, I'm home. Um, I uh, I've got to be honest. Uh, you know, we're living in a time of COVID. Um, I'm loving it. I'm loving. I'm loving it. I mean, like, think about all the things that I can do now that I couldn't do before. I mean, like, I am working out in my underpants and nobody calls the cops, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a wonderful thing. All the things I can do in my underpants are really great. Uh, I'm kind of getting a little bit nervous though, about sort of reintegrating after, after COVID times to actually see people again. Like I'm starting to get, it's been so long that I've not seen my friends and not seen people again, that I feel like it's going to be like a, like a re-education that we're going to have to re learn how to communicate with people. It's going to be like, like grade school, like going through the bases, you know, where it's like, you know, first base, you know, like <laughs> second base, you know, maybe like third base, you know, and then and just fucking, I guess. I don't know, like it's just all the way, but it's like, we're going to have to train ourselves. We're going to have to like relearn how to like, how to um, be. And, um, but it hasn't all been great. I have actually, I've got a number of friends. It seems like more and more, with this latest spike, more and more people that I know actually are getting it. So I've decided no more friends. I am not making any more fucking friends because it's too painful. And so like when people are like, hey, we should hang out after this. And I'm like, no, we shouldn't because I don't want to lose you. <laughs> um, that's the truth. All right, are you ready for your first comedian? Yeah. 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 All right, so let's just practice a cheer because I want to also test this this volume thing. Are you ready for your first comedian? Yeah! yeah. Woo. All right, so please welcome to the stage your first act for tonight. Please give it up, and I really want you to give it up for Tony Cyprian! Hey, hey, what's, hello, people! Hello, how you doing? I see ya! And from the looks of things, some of y'all are wondering, is that Tony? The one that did all that time? <laughs> but let me help y'all ass out. <laughs> People are always asking me, hey, Tony. What's the hardest thing about doing time in prison? Doing time in prison. <laughs> <laughs> but I get it though, I get it. No, seriously, I get it. What they really wanna know is, what 
count your losses. How does it feel? Well, you lose a lot when you go to prison. Like family and friends. Write me. I'll write you. I'll write you. No, I'll be right here. I love you. That helped it in the last six days. <laughs> <laughs> but you lose your rights. You know, you lose. And the first one of those rights to choose to leave is the right to choose. And well, <clears throat> I give you an example here. Let's, how many of you guys like going on vacations? Yeah, everybody, right? Yeah. So let's say in your vacation, you, you know, you have a right, you know, uh, uh, you choose where you want to go. How you're going to get there. Be it train, plane, or skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say you choose the bus because you want to do some sightseeing. And you even have a choice as what bus line you want to choose, be it Greyhound, Trailway, or Express Highway. <laughs> so the day of the trip, you show up to the bus terminal in a comfy pair of jeans, that t-shirt that says, hell yeah, across the front. You got those flip-flops on. And you even got your little igloo ice chest with all your little <laughs> snacks that you're going to have for your little journey. <laughs> and you're greeted by your bus driver, whose name is Norm. Mm -hmm. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Norm. And I'll be your bus driver from Los Angeles. Stand -up. First stand well, 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 wow. well, well, She's stop. never done stand up. She just decided to get out and stretch her legs and grab a hot That's meal. Like, kind of like jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where you can get out and uh, <laughs> where you can get out and stretch your legs and have a hot meal. And in the overhead compartment there, you'll find a complimentary pillow and lap blanket. <laughs> Make yourself nice and cozy on your journey here. And in the back of the bus, you'll find the bathroom with all the amenities. <laughs> Sit back and enjoy your ride on Express <laughs> Highway. <laughs> now let's take this same journey through the California Department of Corrections. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this bus line ain't none of you motherfuckers ever heard of. It's called the Great Goose. <laughs> this is the most secure bus line in D world. The strip search makes TSA look like mall cops, all right? <laughs> and this strip search, before you get on this bus, you gotta have a strip search. And this strip search is done so fucking frequently <laughs> that it's referred to as the dance. <laughs> okay, boys, let's do the dance. <laughs> I'm thinking, like, I don't know no chorus line. Who the fuck? Did? Nobody told me to kick ball chain shit. You know? <laughs> then all of a sudden, in unison, you see motherfuckers standing there going, like, ah, 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 ah. Uh, all right, uh oh, all right. Damn, they want to see every nook and cranny of you. They want to see shit your proctologists don't even know. <laughs> so after you've done this strip search, now they hand you a bundle of traveling clothes. 
and they giving it to you and they tell you getting a single file line now remember i'm still asshole naked here <laughs> and there's another guy standing behind me but i'm standing in front of a guy too now come on <laughs> so we're all marched to some other little tank and i look to my left and there's an extremely fat dude in this tank and he has that same outfit on only his t-shirt comes way up here <laughs> looks like a halter top or something and the underwear that he has on the elastic i can hear it screaming <laughs> <laughs> so i go into the tank i unroll the clothes they give me a 4x t-shirt that comes way down here a pair of 50 underwear <laughs> oh, I'm wrapping these drawers around me like six or seven times. I'm just like, <laughs> Till I get them into a tight little something. <laughs> and then I got to slide into this jumpsuit. Sleeves are dangling. I look like a 10 year old kid in his father's workout outfit. <laughs> and not to make matters worse. They accessorize this outfit. They give me some bracelets, a waist <laughs> chain, some ankle bracelets. And now if I wasn't walking funny enough already, now they got me hobbling like this. <laughs> <laughs> so I make it out to the bus, make it to my seat. <laughs> Here's this driver who's also the person who just searched me. I'm not comfortable with this. I'm not cool with this. I, this wasn't my choice. Okay, motherfuckers, listen up. My name is Officer Lowcut, and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> there shall be two rules you shall follow while on my bus. <laughs> One, there is absolutely positively no talking. <laughs> two, that bathroom in the back, number ones only. Don't think about it, do boy. You were given a sack lunch, dinner, getting on this bus, which will consist of one cup of peanut butter, <laughs> one apple, a pack of carrots, Kool-Aid with no water. <laughs> This shit don't mold. It don't get stale. It don't do nothing but be what the fuck it is in this pack. We don't know what it is. But we eating this shit. First of all, we trying to, you got these shackles on, so you're trying to <coughs> patch your sandwich together. Now you're trying to eat it. What a terrible sight. <laughs> what a terrible sight. So you ask me, what's hard about prison? Shit, I don't know. I ain't got there yet. This is just a motherfucking bus ride. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Give it up for Tony hey. Tiffin! Woo! Way to go, Tony. Take a bow, man. Take a bow. Right. Woohoo! Amazing, amazing. All right, thank you, Tony. That was genius.
Thank you. Um, and yes, I love it. We got uh, in the comments, you're getting some love, Tony. Uh, way to find the humor in the absurd. That was so good. So yes, definitely give it up for the comics in the chat. We want to hear the love. And for those of you who arrived uh, after my last um, sort of PSA, please check also in the chat. I put how to set your audio settings because what we're trying tonight is a new new uh, fangled thing where you could leave yourself unmuted, but you drop your input volume really far down, and that way it allows us to. Um, still hear you laugh but you don't blow out the sound so um so you're doing great you're following directions you're very well behaved and civilized audience this is like unheard of in stand-up comedy so i just i appreciate you um you're also the best looking audience especially those of you with your cameras off okay um let's hear it for our very next act we're going to welcome to the stage our next Stand up one of my favorite, my new favorite people in the world. It is Darcy Lee. Give it up for Darcy. Woo! Dance it out, Darcy. Mm, 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 mm. Hi. <laughs> I uh, am an expert on two things. One of them is uh, my mortality, like worrying about when I'm going to die. And the other is shopping <laughs> about 10 years ago my niece told me that she'd read an article that how long it takes to get up off the floor determines how long you're going to live well i really took it to heart <laughs> i was like wow i don't think i'm really that good at that <laughs> i took it so far like how how do they get a study like that do they go to a nursing home and go, hey, <laughs> on your chairs, everyone, on the floor. All right, get up, we're timing you. <laughs> and then they wrote down when they died. <laughs> I have my own study that I do. I go to a Christmas party and midway through the night, we sit around the fireplace on the floor. <laughs> It's the same people every year. And when the hostess says, dinner, I sit there and watch everyone get up. I'm not mean about it. But I do go like, oh, I think you've only got five years. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm really jealous. People just hop up on the floor. I'm like, I, I have two techniques. I'm going to show you, sort of. OK, the first one, you have to get all the way down the floor. No cheating is called the single knee dip. I'm going to do it now. OK, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Yeah, not really, not that bad. OK, so my second technique is called the double knee scooch. Probably, this is probably not that good for parties. You can imagine. OK, so you stick your butt up in the air. Up. Scooch your knees in. Yeah. Huh. I'm going to live forever. Try to remember my name. I do that every time. I do. Those are, are not <laughs> the right lyrics. Um, uh, you know, it has been a year of masks. I think masks and condoms are alike. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do we need this? <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend who's in a women's group. And she uh, is in her 30s, mid-30s. And they call her the cougar of the group. <laughs> What's that make me? <laughs> Paper tooth tiger. <laughs> I get masks in the mail as samples, and I got a mask the other day that said, Old guys rule. Really? <laughs> Isn't that our problem? 
Times <laughs> rule. <laughs> That's why when I see Kamala dancing in the rain, I know she doesn't dance like this. Kamala, I pronounced her name right. I get goosebumps. She was holding an umbrella. <laughs> But you know, I have some advice for Kamala. Kamala, say this. Joe, get down. All the way down. <laughs> okay, get up. <laughs> On Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Five. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Woo! Give it up for you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Dance it off. You dance it off. I love it. It's definitely amazing. Um, remove spotlight. Okay, great. Um, so funny. So good. Um, thank you everyone for being here, by the way. I'm going to re, uh, reset the stage. My name is Corey. You are here for a stand-up comedy uh, workshop showcase. Uh, in, uh, in essence, what we did is, is we had a four class Zoom workshop with a bunch of people, many of whom, most of whom have never done stand up before at all. And the workshop basically took them through uh, writing jokes, constructing jokes, editing those jokes, and then ultimately, of course, performing those jokes. And so what you are here tonight seeing is the culmination of that. And I think they're all killing it. Can we hear it for all of the performers so far? Yeah. Also, for those of you who um, have arrived late just to make sure you see it because I was putting it in the chat, but we do have a way that you can keep yourself unmuted and laugh, but not blow out the sound. And the way to do that is to go to your audio settings and drop your input volume really low, like not all the way off, but like 10% or something really low. And then we can do it because Darcy, there was one joke of yours that we lost. Would you, can do you still have your audio on? Can you do your, your mask and condom joke one more time for us? can't hear you now. Okay, you can hear me now. Just um, one more time. I just got to hear your joke one more time. Hold on, I'm going to spotlight you. I cut my, hear my head too. Uh, okay. Masks, it's been a year of masks, right? Masks and condoms. You know, they're a lot alike. After a few drinks, it's like, hmm, do we need this? There we go, Darcy Lee. Yes, uh, that was much better. Um, uh, at least I couldn't hear. Okay, we're gonna keep the fun going. So, um, yes, David's dog Scruffy is loving all of the comics, really enjoying it. And we're gonna bring out our uh, next comic. So, while I get her queued up, please make a lot of noise and welcome to the stage, the virtual stage, the one, the only Mel G. Yay. 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 I do want to say thanks to all my friends out there that came to the show tonight. I see all of you. So thanks very much for doing that. My name is Mel G. Uh, I have to tell you that I want to say to Darcy, first of all, my solution to the one Mississippi is I just never get on the floor. But besides <laughs> that, um, I want to say that I was going to wear my pajamas tonight. Because the truth is that uh, I'm usually done with my dinner by about four o'clock. And then I stay up until the nightly news is over, which for me is six o'clock. And uh, this is a little bit past my bedtime. I asked Corey to move up the time of the show, but he didn't. He represents younger people. He didn't think that that was so important. And I recognize also that I'm here tonight, really, to represent the millions of older adults that live in the Bay Area, many of whom are in our audience tonight. Uh, we are um, erroneously known as the uh, silent, but obviously invisible majority. <laughs> and, um, I know that a lot of the times when I'll just be walking down the street on the sidewalk, some 20 something will come right at me as if I don't even exist. And I do have to step aside because I'm afraid of the interaction at this point. <laughs> um, 
Now, a lot of this did get highlighted, I'll say exacerbated, maybe even reified by Governor Newsom. When in the beginning of COVID, he mandated that anybody over the age of 65 had to stay home. I really couldn't believe it. No more movies, no more restaurants, no more spontaneous trips to the Good Vibrations store. <laughs> <laughs> so my squad and I spent many, many hours watching the TikTok and the YouTube videos of the influencers and how they used makeup. We figured we could take tips from them to make ourselves look 64. <laughs> we'll be able to lead a normal life. I'll be a, a much younger one. My friend Sylvia, I had to say, no, honey, I think the primer goes on below the um, bronzer and the rouge. <laughs> I think that uh, you've got that a little bit backwards. And to my other friend Blanche, I would say, honey, you just put a little bit of white in the corners of your eyes to make yourself look younger. You know, Blanche, the truth is, we're just probably a little too white anyway. Cut back <laughs> on the white. So I want to tell you that um, the truth is aging is a very slippery slope. And I had my very first experience of having to come to terms with my age when I was actually really, really young. Just like some men who start balding in their 20s and their 30s. For me, it was a trip to Trader Joe's. There I was just minding my business, picking up some trail mix, maybe a couple of kiwi, something like that. And when I went to the cashier, she said, would that be paper or plastic, ma'am? Oh. I thought, oh my God. I've been mammed, and I think every <laughs> single woman out there who's ever been mammed knows how toxic that can be. And for me, I was only 50, maybe 55 tops. <laughs> <laughs> then I had a very catastrophic experience. I went to go visit a friend of mine, a neighbor who had recently moved, had to move into a senior residence. I wasn't in that building more than 30 seconds when one of the staff approached me and said, you look a little confused. Can you need some help finding your room? <laughs> I said, help finding my room? No, I don't need any goddamn help finding my room. I left it in my house in Rockridge. <laughs> Get your goddamn hands off my walker. <laughs> so, I think the hardest thing about aging is that you have to recognize there's no time for any more do-overs. <laughs> probably not going to finish your EGOT in time. And that chronic constipation is not just a figment of your imagination. <laughs> really, though, the hardest thing about aging is convincing yourself that you're actually old. Because the truth is, anybody over the age of 10 never feels their age. I feel mm, 35, maybe 45 tops. And then I get in situations like Corey's class, and all the younger people, I'm thinking we're all the same, and they're all looking at me like, uh, are you feeling a little bit fragile today, old lady? <laughs> <laughs> I go, no, 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 I'm really okay. Um, <laughs> So when Newsom did say that all the old folks had to stay at home, I panicked. I got scared. I wasn't prepared for lockdown. And even though I know I can hoard with the best of them, <laughs> I was caught with only three rolls of toilet paper left. Oh, no. And then one day my neighbor came to me and said, you know, I was at Costco yesterday. And there were aisles and aisles of toilet paper and other paper products as high as the eye could see. It was like from heaven and back. <laughs> but the trick is you have to go at senior hour. <laughs> <laughs> I said, senior hour? I, I, I'm sure I don't qualify. <laughs> and then I kind of thought, you know what? If the world is going to treat me as if I'm old, I might as well take advantage of that. 
and go to the senior hour at the market, at the post office, at the bank, and well, Costco. <laughs> now, the only problem is that the Costco senior hours are from eight to nine in the morning. <laughs> I don't know who thought of that. It was like, hey, Chuck, do you think we ought to make the senior hours from eight to nine? No one will show up. Good idea, Louie. Then we can just all sit around and watch the OLED TVs that are on display for a couple hours. <laughs> However, I decided I was going to try it. I was going to see if I could it's make a senior hour. And because I'm a night owl, senior hours at 11 would have fe suited me better. Or maybe even 1 p.m., you know, right after breakfast. But I was going to do my best. So the night before I was going to go to senior hours, I slept in my clothes. <laughs> that way, all I'd have to do in the morning is get up and shit, shave and throw on my wig <laughs> and show up at senior hour. I also put my COVID to go bag, my COVID to go kit in the car the night before, you know, gloves, mask, defibrillator. <laughs> I wish somebody would defibrillate me. You know, it's been a long time. <laughs> So I toodle on over to COVID, and I mean, to, sorry, Costco, and I'll tell you the hardest thing really about going to Costco senior hours is really remembering to go. And then once you get there, remembering why you're there. It's like, God, this giant warehouse, did I come for Metamucil? Maybe some Depends? Oh, I bet it's that two liter bottle of scotch. <laughs> so I just figured the easiest thing for me to do was to just join the conga line of all the other old folks that were pretty addled and trying to figure out what they were doing. And so as we went through the aisles, something was bound to jog our memory. <laughs> I found myself in the paper product section, which was fortunate for me because that was what I needed to do. And there I am standing in front of the, of the pallet of the 48 pack of Cottonelle. I have my hand on the pack and this little old lady right next to me says, thanks for getting that down for me, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I look at her and I say, you look like a very sweet old lady and I bet you spend half of your time making oatmeal cookies for your grandkids, but this pack of 48 is mine. <laughs> and I try to put it into my cart when all of a sudden, bam, from behind me, she just granny slapped me. <laughs> so I said to her, no, you don't understand. I'll fight to the death for this 48 pack. And she said, Go right ahead. My artificial knee in the end zone tells me I'm going home with the cotton now. So, uh, <laughs> of course, I did defer because I'm really much more of a lover than a fighter. <laughs> so everyone um, at Costco knows the rules of the Costco senior hours. One of the major rules is you have to be 60 or older. 60, don't even get me started. 60 year old, you know, I hate them. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever stood next to a 60 year old, but I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, they're not even stooped over yet. <laughs> they're not, they just make the rest of us look bad. <laughs> and the truth is those 60 year olds probably don't even know how to play Mahjong. We call them the rookies, the farm team, the posers in the aging space. <laughs> oh yeah. And if they're not working in Silicon Valley where the mandatory retirement age is 40, they're probably still working. They may have an AARP card, but they're not RP'd yet. <laughs> and also most of them are still driving. Nobody I know drives anymore. Our kids have taken away our keys. <laughs> So I have to tell you that the dirty little secret about the Costco senior hours is that it's actually a real swinging scene. <laughs> Honestly, it's like speed dating. 
but real slow. <laughs> I know when I'm there looking for a guy, I don't care anymore if they're rich or if they're good looking. All I care about is can they make it all the way from dinner to dessert? <laughs> once I've slipped that Viagra into their applesauce, <laughs> I want to make sure they can hold up their end of the bargain without breaking a hip. <laughs> oh, Mel, that was so good. Oh, yeah, let's hear it one more time for Mel G. Oh, Mel, I want you to read the comment. I want you to go to the chat and read all the love you were getting during uh, during your act. It was so good. You were uh, you lit up the room and uh, you represented uh, ladies of a certain age, people of a certain age. Thank you. Thank you. Shave and put on my wig. That's all it takes. I'm gonna start my day tomorrow like that. Um, all right, let's um, keep the party going. We have a um, a wonderful a I would say an old friend an amazing storyteller and a delightful stand up now on the scene. Please welcome to the stage, the one, the only Emily Nathan Farr. Hey. Hey. Uh, thank you, Corey. Oh man, keep it going for Tony and Mel, my classmates, as well as all the comics and Corey. Thank you so much for, for doing this. Um, so my name is Emily and uh, I used to manage a farmer's market here in San Francisco. Uh, which it, people think it's a cool job. It's, it's a cool job. It's, it's not so cool if you like to get paid in cash or, or money of any type, but it is cool if you like to get paid in root vegetables. Um, ooh, a lifetime supply of kohlrabi. Yes, perhaps my landlord will accept this in lieu of rent. Um, so maybe it was my lack of financial independence at the time, but something about the farmer's market kind of made me feel like I was like back in high school or just kind of reminded me of like a high school from like a teen movie, like a stereotypical high school. You know, there's like people bustling, the halls are really wide. There's lots of people, but you can kind of see like the little cliques and groups around. There's that one choice lunch table in the middle where all the cool kids sit. No normal people can ever sit there. You have to sit on, you know, the grass or something. Um, there's one area that always smells like weed uh, and it's right by the kettle corn guy. Um, there's the really enthusiastic, like overly enthusiastic samples guy who's like the lead cheerleader. And he's like, try, try, try before you buy. And you're just like, <laughs> do not make eye contact with that guy or he will try to sign you up for the pep rally. <laughs> so you keep it moving. Over here, we've got the skinny goth vegans and all they're selling is beet greens and nettles. They're like, metal tea can do wonders for your mood, but it makes your pee smell bad, like real, <laughs> real bad. Um, and then like what high school would be complete without this group of dudes walking down the middle like they own the place with their white jackets on, embroidered names on the front, the chefs. Mm -hmm. And like they walk in there like they own the place, which they kind of do because of the amount of money they're about to spend. And all the farmers are like so thirsty for them. They're like, yo, Nettles, what's up? What you got for me today? And she's like, oh, anything you want, chef. I love you. Um, and then they like start bragging like they won the big game last night. Like, yo, bro, can you believe we sold out of ramp tacos at 6.30? That tarragon aioli that you made was fire. And yo, 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 Julio, you got to hook me up with more of those cranberry beans. Give me 80 pounds, bro. Oh. Uh. Okay. <laughs> so for some reason, I saw all this and I was like, I want a chef boyfriend. <laughs> they are so cool. So uh we've all heard of like dad bod maybe you're familiar with that but I was really feeling chef bod it's just like the whole look like that like artisanal cider belly uh kind of pooching out over those like gingham hammer pants they wear um and the pro you know I mean I was really like oh yum like they smell like yummy snacks you know I was like I want to lick you like mm. um 
And, you know, I mean, dreams do come true. Like 10 short years later, uh, in a few restraining orders, I did manage to land a chef. Um, but the problem is my husband is, is too professional of a chef. He's like a super amazing professional chef and he doesn't want to cook with me. Like I always had this idea that me and my chef boyfriend, were going to go on dates, like at my house cooking together. And it was going to be like a mashup of the sexy pottery scene from ghost and the spaghetti scene from lady and the tramp. <laughs> so like I'm picturing me cooking in my apartment and you know making up a big bat of borscht and here comes my like chubby Patrick Swayze wearing Crocs and he's like up behind me and he's like oh my love my darling I'm for your borscht but that never happened it didn't happen so, you know, my husband's like fantasy is like him being alone in the kitchen where he can like tinker with all his recipes. He's like, you leaving this area would be so good for me. <laughs> um, so, but I really like being with them because we appreciate the same things in food. You know, the thing is like, I'm not a food snob at all, but I do love it when people like put love and care into the food that they make. So, you know, for example, I cannot associate with, or I, I can never date someone who thinks that it's appropriate to bring baby carrots to a potluck. Like no social gathering has ever been improved by a plastic baggie full of damp veggies. Like that's not appropriate at all. Um, and I feel like a, a tub of hummus just like doesn't improve the situation whatsoever. And there's only two options. Either you run to the kitchen and you throw it in the fridge and you're just like, okay, I brought my contribution. That's good. I can go back to the party. Or you try to pour it into a bowl and make it look good. But then you have kind of these like carrots that are just sort of like sitting there wet, like in a little uh, marinade of like carrot water. And you're just like, that looks terrible. Um, do you guys remember potlucks? I'm like getting kind of sad thinking about them. <laughs> like it's been such a long time since I thought about a potluck. Um, something else no one's thought about in 10 months is fondue. Maybe like 10 years, you haven't thought about fondue. Um, it's a fondant now. So basically, I'm just gonna say one thing about fondue and then I'm gonna get out of here. So if you're ever invited to a fondue potluck and you are entrusted you ask the host, like, what should I bring? And you have the balls to sign up for bread. You really should have your arrival plan, your backup arrival plan, and your backup backup arrival plan ready to go. Like gas tank filled, BART card filled, sensible footwear on. Do not wear high heels because you might have to run to the store and run to your destination to get that gluten to the party. <laughs> I once went to a fondue party and the first hour was just 10 people trying to make broccoli absorbent. <laughs> like I did not come here to eat brown slices of apples and other slippery foods. Like I need something to sop up this cheese with. So I don't want a cube of salami. I do not want a potato on a stick. <laughs> and do not talk to me about those slippery ass carrots. <laughs> That's my time. Thank you. Emily, Nathan, Fowler, everyone. Keep it going. Yes, Emily, great. Take a bow. Take a bow. <laughs> Woohoo! Amazing. All right. Um, fantastic. Um, that was so great. Um, you know what's sort of wonderful, amazing about Emily and about everybody is watching the stuff come together, like watching them take like unformed ideas, unformed jokes, and sort of making that all come together is a wonderful miracle um, thing. And um, and nothing does it like um, peer pressure, right? It's just like having a deadline, and this is the deadline. This is the big show. Uh, we have two more acts for you. Are you ready for your next comedian? Yes. All right. Then please come to the stage. My good friend and yours, Jordan Shapiro. Pyro. We'll, we'll allow it this one, one time. Um, and uh, I, I have to pee, so I'll, I'll try to make it quick. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Y'all know what the burden is with having an itchy asshole? Uh, yeah, it's seeking out a safe space to scratch it. That's right. Straight white dudes need safe spaces too. For snowflakes. No two itchy assholes are the same. 
mine, for instance, you know, it's an emotionally draining and needy as fuck and whose love language is touch. And by touch, I mean constant and intense scratching. <laughs> In many ways, my asshole reminded me of my ex-wife. Well, except for the love language. We had a strict no touching rule in our marriage. We were way ahead of the current trend of keeping six feet apart at all times. <laughs> Remember the before times when you actually had to go to work? When you had to be around people who weren't so keen on your bodily functions? Listen, I know the pandemic has been hard on most of you, but do you really want to go back to a place where you can't freely scratch your asshole? So, <laughs> So back in those before times, I used to search for a safe, sp safe space to scratch my asshole at work. I started out by going to the bathroom with a little more frequency, but that got to be a burden and, well, a little suspicious. I'd get up to go to the bathroom every 10, who am I kidding, every five minutes, and I felt like everyone knew what I was doing. So I, st I started to get a little more daring, and I'd quickly duck around the corner and get a couple of good, hard scratches in. But it wasn't enough. I mean, needs weren't being met. Plus, believe it or not, people did depend on the itchy asshole guy to complete some of his duties. Yeah, I said duties. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't keep getting up from my desk all the time, so I got even more brazen. I'd do a quick glance around the office space, make sure no one was looking, and I'd dig right in. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Make it bleed. Make it bleed. Of course, that eventually led to me throwing all caution to the wind, and I started to scratch pretty much all the time. I even stopped clipping my nails so I could get a really good grasp on that irritated skin. Uh, I'm sorry, is this upsetting you? I didn't know I was playing to such a delicate audience. <laughs> anyway, scratching became, eventually became an ordinary part of my day, and I, I can't exactly pinpoint the time when I completely stopped being aware of what I was doing at work, but I really started to question life one day when I was two fingers deep and I made direct eye contact with Jim from accounting. Jim? Jim? All right, see you at the meeting at two. <laughs> That's when I made the doctor's appointment. This would be a huge relief. Finally, I have someone I can pour my heart out to, someone who would understand the pickle I was in. I arrive at the doctor's office and I'm, I'm a little bashful at first. So I've got this uh, irritated skin. Yeah, no problem. Let's take a look at it. Well, come on. I've seen it all. There's nothing to worry about. Well, it's, it's on my anus. And I'm not kidding. This was his actual response. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> Hold on your pants. I guess we'll take a look at it. Turns out my ex-wife wasn't the only one disgusted by my asshole. Aww. <laughs> and his diagnosis after looking for, at it for all of three seconds, I was wiping way too hard for way too long. And I left his office and I sat in my car pondering this for a long time. Why did I spend so much time wiping so hard? And it struck me that no touching rule in my marriage, it really wasn't working out for me. I just wanted to feel something. That's when I knew I wanted a divorce. Thank you. Aww. Yes. Aww. yes. Jordan Shapiro. Shapiro. Thank you. That's Shapiro. Thank you, Jordan. That was um, wonderfully um, uh, wonderful. It was wonderfully wonderful in every way. It was a sensory experience. I think we all felt something and Maybe we didn't want to feel, maybe we did, but we were feeling it. We're feeling it, and the feeling was laughter and love for Jordan Shapiro, right? Let me hear from him one more time. Yes. Yes. Yay. Oh, glorious, glorious. All right, so friends, we have made it. Our last comic for uh, the night is about to come up, so uh, I know you've been saving it. Uh, don't save it anymore. Let it out. Laugh your heads off because you've deserved it. This has been a fucking crazy week and you're ready to laugh some more. So bring it out for Kate Lewis! Uh, real quick, I just want to tell Emily, my my partner is also a chef and he smells fucking disgusting. So I have no idea. <laughs> so, um, hey everybody. Uh, I... I'm Kate, first of all, uh, I'm Kate, and um, I grew up poor. I imagine you can tell by the fact that I decided to come to my big showcase wearing 
a flannel today. Um, <laughs> perhaps you can also tell based on that exact same fact that I also grew up in Maine. Um, and Maine, as we you know, probably know, is the northernmost state in New England. It is like Canada light. Um, and the hardest part about growing up poor in New England is that, you know, there are still seasons. You still have to deal with the seasons. Turns out mother nature doesn't give a shit about your economic status, okay? So you just have to live through it. And if you didn't know, growing up poor in the winter is not the same as growing up poor in the summer. That's called camping, California. <laughs> For example, in the summer growing up in Maine, being poor, my, it might sound something like this. Uh, hey, mom, the, uh, the power went out. Oh, yeah? Go outside. <laughs> <laughs> the winter, probably more something like this. Hey, hey, mom, the power went out. Oh, yeah? Well, you know the drill. Huddle up in the corner with your brothers. Try to stay warm for the, till the end of the month. I'm going to head down to the stop and shop. Buy them out of saran wrap. We're going to cover up these windows. <laughs> we called it redneck insulation. It was almost like having a heater. <laughs> <laughs> to make matters worse, I suffered as a child from a crippling obsessive compulsive disorder. Yeah, I'm a catch. <laughs> so losing power in all of its essence was both an internal and an external struggle for me uh, all throughout. As an example, you know, when the electricity was out, I could still walk into a room and click the light switch five times to, to try to get the demons out. But <laughs> the problem is it doesn't have quite the same relief if you just keep clicking and then there's no light, there's no actual light. You know, that's not the same satisfaction. You just, you can keep clicking. It's just, it's, there's no light. So you, so maybe, maybe you shouldn't even leave the room. Maybe you should just stay in it till summer. It's totally fine. It's whatever. <laughs> so, um, I, I think uh, another very notable piece of my, of my obsessive compulsive disorder was that I, um, real, I, I needed to wear the same clothes every day, every weekday, every week for many years. Okay, so um, I think probably the most memorable piece of clothing that I owned and wore was every single weekend from Friday, from Friday at about 9 p.m. until I got up, went to school on Monday, I wore the same teal tracksuit. And that was for many years of my life. Real quick poll, uh, when does everybody think that most families take family photos? <laughs> you're correct if you're saying weekend <laughs> basically it looked like i went to goodwill and found a bunch of family photo albums and then photoshopped myself in the same outfit in every picture <laughs> for seven years so uh as you can see i was somewhat of an unstable kid uh, through the sheer force of will, I somehow became a pretty active and relatively healthy adult. You know, I started running, I started eating well, I moved to California, I met a smelly chef. Uh, <laughs> I even got outside sometimes when the power was still on. Um, and um, these days, when I flick a light switch, you know, light comes on, which is great. And I usually only have to do it one time which means I'm kind of living the dream at this point. <laughs> so I feel like I've settled into a, a sustained mediocrity and, and, and age is taking shape as, as planned. The, the only problem with kind of starting to get older, as I feel like I am, is that I'm beginning to experience all those kind of quasi illnesses that really just stem from, you know, not really trying hard enough or, or like not trying at all sometimes, right? Um, you know, the ones there, there it's, it's where, you know, everything is a little bit, um, sticky and, and itchy and damp, you know, just kind of all the time. Uh, and you're kind of always moist. Like there's a, there's a thin layer of film on your skin at all times. Uh, for example, I, I suffer from seasonal allergies. So I'm just like snivelly. And, and by the way, that's fucking bullshit because there aren't even seasons in California. 
Why did I develop seasonal allergies as soon as I moved out here, right? What happened in Maine? I also, uh, you know, I have full body dermatitis, so everything always kind of itchy. I have a, a touch of rosacea. Uh, I've got runner's diarrhea, so that's hot as fuck. Um, and I also uh, have started really dabbling into the world of adult onset obesity. So, um, you know, of course, the thing is, is all of these illnesses could be completely reversed if I could just, you know, drink a little bit less alcohol or if I could just eat like three few meals a week that consists mostly of craft singles. <laughs> but I just, I, I don't know. I, 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 you, I told you how I grew up and I took all these, these from my father and this is who I am. So, um, Speaking of dear old dad, uh, the strangest thing about being a complete slob is that it, it, it requires a surprising amount of skill. Um, my favorite story of my dad is that he once successfully snuck an extra large pizza into a movie theater by unzipping the back zipper pocket of his leather jacket and putting the entire box of the pizza all the way in and just walking in. <laughs> and I feel like that, the cool thing about that is it gives you a visual of just how wide his back was. It was, <laughs> right? This was not a small person. <laughs> so I think the thing is though, is that when I reflect on that story, I'm pretty annoyed because I didn't think of it. <laughs> years of I was trying to stay warm and huddling in a corner in Maine in the winter and all I had to do was slip an entire pizza into the back of my teal <laughs> uh, thank you yeah. hey, Lewis the one the only Kate Lewis yes keep it going for Kate and while you're keeping it going for Kate I want to keep it going for all of her stand-ups tonight so I'm going to add you all to the stage so that includes Darcy Lee Emily Nathan Farr uh who we got Jordan Shapiro Jessica Watkins who else is here Tony you still there yes Tony Cyprian Mel G I see you Mel G and is that everyone who did I miss anybody anybody one Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the show. All right, give it up for these guys. Woo! Oh, wait, everybody, stay right there. I'm gonna do a group picture. Ready? Uh, oh, that wasn't. That was preemptive. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Got it. All right. Thank you all so much for coming to this show tonight. I am going to. Um, uh, put in the chat if you want uh, if you want to take a class uh, Please check out my website CoreyRosen.com. I'm teaching classes all the time stand up and storytelling. Um, I would love to have you um, uh, In a class to do um, some fun stuff like this so. um, The class is really I think that they're remarkable that we really only had four classes and Corey basically sh helps you shape everything so you can come with a little tiny germ of an idea and it turns out to be an entire piece you want to tell a joke alex before we go uh all right it's gonna be a bad one though um we know. Did, you hear, did, you, did you hear about all the cephalopods that went camping in lower manhattan <laughs> yeah they, they were there for octopi wall street oh. <laughs> yes i'd right, say go out on a joke <laughs> thank you all so much for coming thanks to all the comics thanks oh to all the audience I know, right now thank you i need a laugh get safe, get safe. tip your tip your uh weight staff and we'll see you next time. thank you Corey. Bye, everybody. Bye. thank you guys